what up you guys welcome back to the channel so today I'm doing a time-lapse unboxing because I hate unboxings of the artist 24 pro from XB pen this is the 2k version and I'm just showing you some of the peripherals that are included including the glove and all the wonderful things they include in there with an extra pen as well so I'd originally talked over this video, but um, in lieu of some of the other th uh, people that do it much better than me, I just figured I'd go ahead and time lapse all of this. It was packaged well. It, you know, just exactly as expected. You know, everything's neat and tidy, and, uh, you know, nothing was out of place, nothing was broken. They shipped it very well. And, you know, I'm explaining some little things here and there um, of the device peeling off the, the screen protector, talking about the quick keys and the rotator keys. So we're gonna move on to removing that pesky back stand because I'm gonna be mounting this on an Ergotron mount. So let's get to it. And this is what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this particular um, part off the tablet. They included this handy dandy screwdriver and if you look inside there's a Phillips head screwdriver or a screwdriver and of course a flathead. I'm not sure what the flathead's going to be used for because pretty much all of the screws on the device are Phillips heads. So let's go ahead and remove that really quick. Okay so obviously I take things for granted that I have as far as knowledge and I think that sometimes I overlook the fact that a lot of you don't have any mechanical ability or knowledge at all. So I unpacked the screwdriver right here. What this is, is it's a reversible. So all you got to do is pull this out, reverse it, and stick it back in. It's got a keyway similar to a, uh, a nut pattern, bolt pattern, and it just fits right in really snug. It feels like it's made out of PVC uh, plastic. So what you're going to do is you're just going to unscrew the Phillips head screws... It's not magnetic, so what I like to do is I just leave the screws in there. That way, they won't end up falling somewhere off in the abyss. Okay. And it's pretty simple. You're just unscrewing screws. Now, remember, one of the things that, <coughs> again, I take for granted is an understanding how screws come out. So, what you're going to remember is this little rhyme, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. Lefty-loosey righty tighty. You turn it left is loose, you turn right is tight. That is the rule. It's the rule that pretty much is standard on all things like this. Where you might run into trouble is if you're unloosening bicycle pedals, and then it's the opposite. It'll mess your brain up. Okay, so that is taking the mount, or I'm sorry, the stand off of the XP pin tablet. And I've set it on this um, cardboard, uh, on the cardboard box, because I don't want scratches, <laughs> okay? I'm not going to scoot it. I just literally just laid it there. So now, this is a standard mount. Um, so I've got an Ergotron arm that I'm going to mount to this really quick. And then, again, it's just a plate. It's a metal plate with four screws that go in. I'm not going to show you that, because that's kind of boring. So... Let's move on to the next. Just to give you a visual reference of what I'm doing, here's the plate that I'll be mounting it to. Here's my Ergotron arm. It mounts to my table. I've got it in a configuration to where it goes back and then up. And for those of you who don't understand how these work, they work on tension. There's a spring on the inside, and you can see down there, there's a little Allen key, um, a little Allen nut. And what you're going to do is you're going to loosen righty-tighty, Lefty loosey, righty tighty, to make it, um, uh, it's going to be more resilient to weight. So, this tablet is um, probably a little bit heavier than the existing tablet that was on here. And I'm probably going to have to go in and adjust the, the weight of it or the tension of it just a little bit. And you can see just the four bolt holes, pretty standard. And it came with these. These are pretty cool. You just screw these in really quick. Go ahead and get it mounted. Okay, as you see, I have mounted it onto the Ergotron arm. I'm hesitant to pull it out because I haven't adjusted this for the added weight. Um, yeah, and you guys get to see my actual workstation. This is my actual workstation. 
uh, that I do my professional work in. So it seems to live in that space pretty well. This is very similar to the other tablet that I had in place. And I definitely think this is going to be a great addition to the uh, professional workstation. So there's my Mac, there's my secondary monitor, and here's my primary drawing monitor. So let's go ahead and get her hooked up. Okay, so this is what we're dealing with. This is the uh, tablet set up uh, as uh, my workstation. I had, um, you know, done the unboxing just to kind of give you a process of what's involved. Now, whenever I put it on the Versa arm here, the Ergotron, and bolted it up and everything got set up, I went in and installed this app down here. So we'll go, where's it at? No, yes. So we'll go down, 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 down. Okay, so this is the app that you go to xppen.com and you download the application. And basically you can change the pressure curve, you can change the quick keys, you can program the side keys uh, here on the left-hand side and also the scroll wheel. So. I went in and just uh, messed around a little bit um, to go ahead so I can go ahead and, and do a really quick demo for you guys. Uh, the screen is beautiful. It's really on par with all of the other um, HD screens out there. This is supposed to be 2K, so let's go, let's see what she's running here. System preferences, we'll go to displays. I'm running it on a Mac. This, I believe, is, I don't know what operating system this is about this Mac. So this is Catalina. Um, my Mac's a little bit older, so it doesn't support the latest upgrade. <clears throat> um, I think it's Mojave. I'm not really sure. Either way, it works great so far, and uh, it's got a 60 uh, hertz refresh rate. And then as far as... Let's see, arrangement. You see how I have it arranged. I have my uh, Mac right here. I have my current. It'll give a little red outline um, where uh, this is my main display and then my third display, which is right above me here. And it doesn't give... I'm kind of interested why it doesn't give the scaled standard rotation. No. Air display, we're not doing that. Okay, display brightness. Anyway, so it's just a nice display. The colors are real saturated. It's not overly saturated, which is nice. And it indicates that it gives 90% of the Adobe uh, RGB gamut. I, I went ahead and boosted up the brightness just slightly, and I changed to color match RGB. So, file... New, I just got through updating my Photoshop a few minutes ago, so hopefully it doesn't completely mess me up. Okay. Ooh, I don't like that size. Why did I do that? Let's go ahead and get rid of that. File, new. We'll do 22 by 20 here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and change the... Okay, edit, fill, foreground color. Okay, and then we'll lock that and add a layer. I like working on toned backgrounds. Let's go ahead and move over a little bit. I don't want to hit the tripod here. So what am I going to draw today? So um, I just wanted to kind of do the ins and outs. Now, one other thing that I've noticed... Maybe it's just me. I think it might be because I made it a little bit brighter. So up top are the uh, touch keys. So I'm going to hit the menu. See, it, it has a nice third time. So let's go ahead and a little bit clearer. I think it actually does both contrast and because it seems to be a little bit. There we go, right around 60%. Okay, so now that we've done that, change the color. Let's 
go ahead and go over here, brush settings, change to tilt, because I want tilt on. This tablet does support tilt. Let's go ahead and put this down here for the time being. Yay! Okay, so this is a pretty big document, and uh, I have had a couple people ask me, does the tablet affect the latency? Now, this is a 2K uh, tablet. It's rather large, and my computer is a little bit older. So even though I do have a decent video card, if it does hesitate, it will be on this brush right here. So this would be gigantic. So you can see that it does have a slight hesitation, but it, it, it doesn't have anything to do with the machine, with the tablet itself. It has to do with the fact this is a textured brush and I had it massive. I mean, right now, my document's huge. It's like 20 inches wide. So oh, um, just know that once you hook it up and you start doing really large brushes, if you have a 300 DPI, which is what this is, and you start doing large brushes, it will, uh, you know, you will have an issue no matter how fast your computer is. I haven't seen a computer that hasn't choked on this brush yet. So what am I doing? I love uh, cartoon characters. So growing up, um, I'm sure a lot of you uh, played uh, a game called Earthworm Jim. And it was one of those games that was kind of, I don't know how to put it. It was, it was hard. Earthworm Jim was hard, dude. I don't know who, who thinks it wasn't hard. But it was just plain for freaking hard. And I remember, you know, playing, I think I played it on the Super NES. And I just, there were certain, there were certain boards that I could never get past. And I think the one that chewed me was the booger. It was the booger, uh, it was the booger board. Um, you know, the one that where you're like a piece of snot and you're going, you're, you're going up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down and I can never get past it. So that's where I landed. I never was able to beat the game, which sucks because it was a really cool game. Um, but Earthworm Jim, what in the heck is that? Earthworm Jim is an earthworm who come into contact with a super suit. Pretty cool, right? And the super suit kind of is an extension of his body. And, uh, you know, he just kicks butt, man. I love how, you know, it gave him... He, he used to be just a lowly earthworm. And then suddenly, you know, he's like a superhero. So that's really cool. How does the tablet fly? This is supposed to be a review of the tablet. So right now, I, and that's one of the things that I always do on my channel, is I, I, download, I do an unboxing... I download all the drivers, I install them, and then I go immediately into drawing. You know, I don't do the whole, you know, wiggle test. I want to put it through its paces in a real world scenario. And that's exactly what, uh, you know, this is supposed to be. It's supposed to be me using it exactly how I would is if I purchased it. And here we go. And now I'm basically drawing. So this is a, um, a tablet that you hook up to your machine. Right now I've got it hooked up to a Mac. This is a 2015, I believe, 2014, 2015 iMac, um, i7. Beautiful machine, uh, 32 gigs of RAM, really powerful uh, at the time. It was powerful at the time when I bought it. And now it's, you know, just a little bit past its prime. So hopefully this year we'll be upgrading to uh, the newest, latest and greatest Apple Macintosh. And you're like, dude, why don't you use PCs, don't you? And yes, I do. I do use PCs. But I don't use PCs for my main work. I tried that. I tried using PCs um, for a limited time. For my main work and I paid the price for it. I lost an enormous amount of data <laughs> and it just the driver updates, the security updates. I was losing time after time after time and ultimately I had to come back uh, to the Macintosh uh, because uh, it just for me you know it just works. I don't have to worry about certain things 
every single day. I don't have to worry about, you know, all the security issues, you know, and Windows Defender and then Windows doing crap in the background. Um, and it just works for me. And I know that a lot of you definitely use PCs for your main, uh, for your main, um, machine. But for me, I just use a Mac. It just works for me. All right. So far, I'm not noticing any kind of issues. I'm not noticing any kind of major, you know, things happening that would inhibit me from really recommending this tablet. This is supposed to be their flagship. This is their top of the line. Now, what I'm noticing is interesting. Okay, so, let me see. I'm noticing something happening. Okay, so we're going to keep going. I'm going to bring it up if it happens again. What, there it is right there. So, what is going on there? Okay, what is this? Is my. I think my keyboard might be sticking. Ooh, that's not good. I'm gonna have to get a new keyboard. We can't have that happen. So I'm going to have to make it even smaller. I'm going to go down a little bit because his head comes up. Earthworm Jam. Yes, I've always loved Earthworm Jam. Okay. Of course, I'm just doing a character off right now. Keeping it rough, keeping it simple, keeping it... Yeah, my keyboard keeps sticking. So, that sucks. You're like, why don't you just use the quick keys on the board, man? What's wrong with you? You know what? How about we do this? Go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and file save as. Okay, you guys are getting a rare EW gym, a rare visual of my workstation because this is my this is my workstation where I do all my work. So, <clears throat> okay, so let's go back. Let's go to okay here applications. Let's scroll down. You're seeing exactly what you would, you know, probably experience if you went ahead and installed a new tablet and you're going through the motions. And like I said, I had already done a couple things, but, you know, okay, so hold on. Built-in function key, scroll, S1, S2. So S1, scroll up, down, scroll, wheel, scroll up, down. Let's do here. Scroll up, scroll down, cancel. Scroll up, scroll down, brush size. Okay. Exit. Let's see if it fixed it. Yay! Okay. So that's really cool. Let's go ahead and go out. Okay. Okay. What I'm noticing is I got a couple things wrong. Wrong. They're blatantly obvious to those who designed this character, right? There's something, and I've mentioned it before, something called on model. And uh, this is literally, 
I have not drawn Earthworm Jim in, in four years, three or four years. The last time I did him, it was something very short and simple. You know, go down just a little bit. Okay. All righty. Yeah, my keyboard's sticking. That is no good. That is no bueno. No bueno. This actually needs to come back. Up. Yep, it's sticking, dude. Down. That's weird. Yeah, well, that's going to aggravate the holy crap out of me. Why is it doing that? Let's try this. That's weird. I wasn't doing it before. What is going on here? Let's go ahead and do this. Let's make his eyebrows. Let's do this. We'll come back. Yeah, the tablet is flawless. My keyboard, however, is literally just messing up. It's messing up left and right. I wonder if I can do, let's go back. Let's hit save. Okay. Mm, sorry about this, guys. I know this is not ideal when this happens. But you get to see how I fix it. So I want to go ahead and, um, hmm, that's, I believe, what was I doing with that one? I think that was the undo. Right? Yes. Okay, so I've got this program to be the undo. And I don't know what I have that one pre-programmed to do. So let's go down. Working. Nope, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to go all the way down back here. So we'll go back to pen tablets. We'll open. Let's see what I have those programmed as. So we've got express keys. We've got K1, K2 program. Do I have K3? K3 is the eyedropper. Hmm, that's, that's good. K9. And let's go up. Okay, so let's do oh, K3. So that's one, two, three, eyedropper. K2, eraser, K1, brush tool, K4, hand, mm -hmm. good. K5, save. All those are good. <laughs> I don't want to change any of those. Okay, K6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, K6, display switch, K7, undo, K8, forward. Okay, K8's the one, so 1, 2, 3. So, to copy paste, no action. Let's do C, eraser, okay, clear. And then we're going to do space, space bar. Okay. Okay, let's try this. Again, this is a process. We'll do F, and we'll do three. So let's do that. I don't know if I can get used to that, guys. You know, they provide these wonderful quick keys, but until you get used to this, it is nightmarish because you keep wanting to reach over like I'm doing right now, even though I've got it programmed in the quick keys. You've got to break the habit, Holmes. Okay, so... Go ahead and define this a little bit better. All right. Maybe I just need to buy a new keyboard. Sure, Mike, go spend more money. That's my wife. Sure, Mike, whatever. Just go spend more money. Yeah. 
Alrighty. Let's go ahead and clean up this drawing a little bit. The, the pen tablet is working flawlessly. It's all the other peripherals that I'm having to deal with with my machine, right? I'm not too keen on the eyes. The eyes are probably wrong. Whoop, do it again. Let's do this. Let's try this. Okay. Make that brush a little bit bigger. Do a little values. Okay, do value good. And I'll take the taper off. Pressure sensitivity is really good. This has oh, 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity, comparable to other tablets in the marketplace. So you're not going to see any discernible um, fall off in terms of pressure. It's really good. And honestly, you know, and I've said this before in my videos, the pressure doesn't really come into play when you're when you're using really small brushes. And, you know, that's just what it is. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Obviously more is better. And I can already notice, you know, between my other tablet that I was using uh, in this place, this tablet does, I mean, it does feel different. It's smoother. The application of the, uh, of the line work, the application of the uh, stroke, it's more exacting. And the parallax, I, in my other tablet, there was a discernible uh, distance between the uh, pen and the actual pixel. This screen is really close to the LCD underneath. I don't know if it's bonded um, or not, but either way, it's really, really close. Okay, so let's get a little white. Let's add a layer. Let's go ahead and put a little eye shine in here. Just a little eye shine. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform, I'm going to warp it just slightly, just slightly, kind of push that out just a little bit, and this goes in a little bit, this goes in, and this goes down, this goes up. Process, 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 process. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in a little value in the background. Go to this brush right here. There. Nice pressure sensitivity. Oh man, just beautiful. Really good. Whoops. A little heavy handed. You can brush. You can brush the pressure curve. <laughs> anyway, so let's let's adjust the pressure curve really quick because I think it's a little soft. It's a little soft. So let's go back. Okay, let's open. Again, we're gonna go back. I'm gonna probably leave it open on a separate pin. Open. Okay, what do I do? Okay, the pen. So right now, I've got the little bit harder, a little bit harder, uh, just a little bit too much. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and put that on alternate screen, which is what I just did. Okay, F. What is going on, dude? Yep, that's weird. Okay, so I adjusted the pressure curve and it just completely messed everything up. <clears throat> okay, let's go back. Let's bring him back. So that's a reset. We'll go a little bit harder over here. Okay, get rid of that. A little bit softer. A little 
little bit more right there. Not bad. Not great. You know, let's go up here. I can adjust the opacity. So what, what I'm looking for in terms of a pressure curve, I want like right whenever I just barely press, I want it to be really light. You know, this right here is just a skosh. Cancel. It's just a skosh too dark. So we're going to go a little bit harder. Reset. A little bit harder. Okay. See, this is... Okay, so right now, it's messing up. Okay, this is the driver. This is a driver issue. Because as you as you saw, let's go ahead and hit F. Let's go back. I don't know. Maybe it has to do. Maybe if I did this. Okay, that's what it is. That's not a driver issue. That's a user error. You gotta watch those user errors. So if I hit, if I go ahead and use the slider right here, and I just do definitive, it's like. Boom, 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 right? So let's hit reset. If I were to just do this, see how it, it definitively just hardens everything and it's not gonna be what I want. So what I want, but I want it to come back this way. So it's a combination between soft when it's soft and then it's uh, I have to press down harder to get more. So let's see what that's like. Nope, don't like that. Reset. And this is tuning. You're tuning. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. So you're basically tuning. Okay, this might be good. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. That's the jelly. Okay, so now I can go in and I can get real nice, easy, soft values. And everything's at 100 and I don't have my taper on. This is what you got to do, guys and gals. This is part of, part and partial of the process that is setting up a new machine, getting to know the new machine, getting to, you know, I can tell you right now, there's a lot I have to redo on this. But overall, do I recommend this device? Heck yeah. And I'm going to tell you why. It's not just because of the wonderful people there at XP Pen with their cool customer service, their demeanors, their fun characters, their devices that are price point, um, not to break the bank. It's a good device. You know, I'm one of those guys that looks at a device and I do, I do this, right? What is that? That is me weighing the positive versus the negative. Because there are always going to be negatives when you use one of these devices. You know, I want a device that doesn't inhibit me from creativity, doesn't stop me from doing the things that I want to do, isn't overly complicated, isn't too expensive. You know, all these variables that I weigh and, you know, they all need to kind of line up. And if they don't, I don't want to use the device. You know, I don't. I don't want to use the device if it's constantly messing up and screwing things up for me. So, you know, this device so far has been really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you guys on time lapse, let you watch me ink Mr. Jim. And I'll come back in color and just kind of show you again the process using this new device. Um... Funny thing is, is 
it's got a lot of bells and whistles. Off. Pin, nope. Tilt. It's got a lot of bells and whistles. Right? Um, and in terms of cost, you know, again, you have to weigh, am I going to keep this device for the next five years? Because I like to do computers on a five-year plan. You know, if I spend four grand on a computer, I want it to last longer than a year. And so far, my Mac, actually both my Macintoshes, I had an old iMac that I that I had for nine years, guys. In the in in the world of computers, that is insanity. Nine years, and I think I think this, I think this is the same computer keyboard. That's probably why I need to replace it. He's like, please replace me. I can't handle all the abuse. You're constantly slamming your fingers on me and making me hurt. I'm like, shut up. You do what I say. You're a keyboard. So I'm going to go and put you guys on DOS time lapse. Please enjoy. And we'll come back in the end. And we'll add some color and have some fun. All right. Okay, so now we're going to, now that I've blocked in the color, I've got my general sketch down. I'm going to go ahead and block in a really simple background. Um, as you see, uh, so far I've only got three layers. So here's my initial sketch, and then I went in and did some eye shine, and here's my, um, my underpainting. Very simple. I don't have any transparencies on any of these layers yet. This one is locked, um, the layer transparency is locked, but it doesn't have an effect on it. So I have it locked, so whenever I decide if I want to put in some textures and whatnot, whenever I paint, it doesn't go outside the lines. However, I'm probably going to do a layer mask. Um, so a uh, simple background. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sample the background and put in a real, just a tonal sort of a, a look, real simple. Let's go to the shader. And I do have taper on, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go far away, just because, you know, if we get in really close, then I'm gonna end up, you know, I don't have the bigger view. So the bigger view, the grand, the grander viewpoint of how I think, you know, things need to go. So basically what I do is I just start real loosely putting in what I think is going to be cool. Sometimes that's what we do. It's like, I think this will be cool. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna increase my brush size and I do have pressure on, I have taper on because in the world of Earthworm Jim, he's always surrounded by danger. So I'm noticing, even right now, you can see I don't have a lot of paint um, on this particular layer. This is uh, the Earthworm Gym layer. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And what that does, and I'm going to copy it again. And what that does is it solidifies um, that color, uh, the pixel density. Okay. Make it somewhat larger. Hopefully you guys are having a good time. The review of this device, this is again an unboxing and kind of putting the um, this flagship device through its paces. I have found a flaw. 
and this is something that I'm sure is also uh, well known. It's probably well known by the XB pe people as well, because I can't be the only one that has found this particular flaw. Um, for all that is great uh, about all the digital devices that we use, we do have sometimes some issues, and I found one with this device. So if you notice the, um, let's do this. Okay, so if you notice the end of the pen and the end of the cursor. So what happens is, um, you know, basically the, uh, the cursor through the duration of working and starting and, and, and restarting the computer, for some reason, the I don't know if the driver remembers the uh, location of where you calibrated it, but it, it, it goes off a little, uh, a little off kilter. So I've restarted the computer twice, and each time that I have restarted it, the uh, calibration is off. So you're like, well, just calibrate it. You know, that's no big deal. Yeah, I, I, I think he, here's the here's the deal. I don't want to have to calibrate the pin every single time I start the machine. That sucks. You know, I don't want to have to sit there and calibrate every single time. And I did, incidentally, I did find the issue with the keyboard. So whenever I first see, and it, I, I feel like it just did something. Let's go back. Now we're good. So. As you saw before, I downloaded their driver, and it was their, their standard driver. And then they had a beta driver. I downloaded the beta driver because what inadvertently happened was um, it wasn't allowing me to double-click. the Some of the other features that were, um, you know, quote-unquote normal with these devices was not working. So I downloaded this beta driver, and this seems to work a lot better. And, you know... You can set up different profiles, which is really cool. You can set your pressure curve, which is really cool. And also, on the standard driver, these buttons weren't working at all. So my uh, my primary uh, buttons here on the barrel were not working. You can go in and set and calibrate and stuff like that. Now, I, I think it's great that they have all these things. However, the challenge that I'm having is the fact that... Um, Number one, if you quit this app, the pen stops working completely. So that's kind of weird. Second of all, like I said, I have to recalibrate the pen every single time that I restart the, the uh, computer. And that is not good. The pressure curve works great. Um, we have nice sensitivity all the way to the edges. I'm not having any issue there. But, like I said, the fact that i got to recalibrate the pin every single time. And, you know, what's cool is it came with two different pins, but it does it on both pins. So, that being said, I did look it up on the internets. And um, I saw one person actually take their XB pin <laughs> XB, their, their pin apart. And I'm like, I'm not sure you're supposed to do that. It even says don't take the pin apart. And there's a little calibration wheel on the inside. So at some point in time, I might actually have to do that. Um, we'll see. So as you see, I am now I'll just copy and paste it and it gets darker. Whoops. Okay. So now I'll come back with the eraser. Okay. And I'll just start shaping some of these. A little bit like this here. His um, world is very distinct. And it's really cool. These little ends right here. Kind of mountainous. Looks like they'd stab you in the face. Not a very pleasant area. Okay. Yeah, I'm enjoying the device. It's not unlike a lot of the other devices that I have. Um, the fit and finish and quality is really good, but here's my deal with devices in general. They just need to work. I don't want to have to deal with issues, especially after spending a crap load of money. Okay. 
which I'm sure you guys can relate. So I've had a lot of people ask me about that device. Um, whenever I work on a PC, it's a little handheld that, that is a quick key device. It's very similar to some of the other quick key devices and it's made by XP Pen, of course. And you can pre-program your, uh, your quick keys into it. Now this device has all the quick keys here on the sides and you got your scroll wheel. Um, but the device that I'm referring to, um, yeah, that's weird. The device that I'm referring to, you can pre-program and it has a battery and it's Bluetooth and it's really cool. Okay. All right. Not bad. So let's copy and paste. Do this. Flip horizontal. this just the opacity a little bit more okay let's go ahead and shape this a little bit better good for that my Alexa talking to me. Okay. Go backwards. Now I'm going to find a nice kind of a green hue. Just do edit fill. How about that? Edit fill, foreground color, deselect, fill out. And now we're going to have a yellow. We're going a little bit textured here. Above it, a little bit brighter. There we go. See, it's a really big brush. So let me go ahead and image canvas size. A lot of times when it, yeah, it's huge. Let's go ahead and make it around 12 inches. Cancel, image, canvas size. 12 inch, canvas size. I'm like, why isn't that working? Because I was messing things up just then. Okay, so now it shouldn't be so bad. Yeah, see. When you have a, a, a file that large and you start trying to use these really complex textured brushes, you start running into the problem of the texture it rendering it. So 12 by 12 is a decent size at 300 DPI. You know, okay, so let's go a little bit brighter, a little bit orange. Good, a little bit brighter. Good. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this. Hold on, let me make sure. Let's do these two, E. And then we're going to layer something on top of it. So it gives it that sense of depth 
Let's go to remove the taper. Okay, we're going to blur, image, filter, Gaussian blur. So it pushes these mountains right here further back. And I keep going back and forth, back and forth. <gasps> Make you sick. <laughs> Somebody say that. He's like, dude, you need to stop moving your canvas because you're going to make me sick, bro. And I'm like, good. 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 No, I wouldn't say that. Actually, I did say that. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, so let's go above that layer. Let's do a green, but this time we're going to change to like a cloud. Let's do clouds. I do have a cloud. I have a cloud brush. I think I have a cloud brush. Yeah, here we go. Clouds. Let's go to the misty. Here we go. So nice. Um, sure. Let's do this first. It's kind of like the misty clouds. Good. Let's go above that. Let's see what I'm doing here in a second. I can get into blue. Blue. Above it, right away. There we go. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay, so what I'm gonna do? You're gonna watch me um, formulate. Not formulate. I'm gonna formulate. <laughs> no, what I'm gonna do is first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and finish rendering. Earthworm. And uh, again, you know, I say this every time. I don't want to get too far into it because obviously I don't want this video to be a million years long. But you're going to see me put some texture in, put some lighting effects in. Um, you know, as you see, we went from three layers all the way to this. So now we're at one, two, three, seven, ten. We're at ten layers, 11, 12. So I think we're at 12 layers. Yes, we're at 12 layers total, and, um, you know, keeping that layer hierarchy is important, um, and keeping it organized, so, you know, at this stage, I'll probably, I'm going to put you guys on, on final time lapse as I go in, and I put in the rest of everything that I'm doing, and let's go back, okay, okay, so, oops, what am I doing? Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I will go ahead and I'll flatten my sketch down to my color layer. And I'll just start rendering over top of it. So like I'll sample this and maybe I'll go a little bit darker. And I'll just start, you know, putting stuff in here and there. You know, maybe I'll go really dark. Kind of give it a painterly look. And you can see in very short order, you get a really nice painterly look. And you can just, since right now, I completely messed that up. I drew on the wrong layer. Oh my gosh. Harry, what? That's okay. So I'll go ahead and switch. I don't really care about the sketch. Right now, honestly. So, here I'll just start putting in the rendering. A little bit darker. And what's cool is, since I have my quick keys, so like I'll be rendering this, and I'm like, ooh, I want to go ahead and do a highlight. So I'll use my, uh, my keyboard. I'll hit the uh, option key. 
Boom, so now I'll do a highlight. Highlight. And see in very short seat. Now I'm going back to shadow or darker hue. Give it that paint. Now this is kind of a traditional way of painting. You know, choosing some of those, whoops, it's warm. Is it really warm right here? Okay. Let's go ahead and do darker. Just having some fun. All right, so on the time lapse.
pretty much where I wanted to land uh, with this piece. So um, some of the final things that I'll end up doing here would probably be go in and, and do some, just some simple blurring of some of the items. Like this area I'd like to blur to kind of give it a little bit of depth of field. So as you see, as I go in, and I know that head part is going to, actually, I'm missing a part here, aren't I? Yes. I'm missing a part. Okay, so let's do this. <clears throat> And drag that down and nope, I didn't want to do that. Half them on a single layer is really beneficial. So now I go in and I'll just put some blurs. Give a little bit of depth of field. Kind of focus your eye. A little bit on the things that matter. That's why, you know, whenever you're working on an illustration like this, <clears throat> it's what you don't put detail in. A lot of times that'll help you bring focus. As you see, I didn't go in and I didn't put a lot of, a lot of detail down here because I knew the main focus was going to be right around here. So let's go ahead and do it right over here. <clears throat> Because again, that's a little bit further off in the distance. So, how did the device perform? I think overall it was really good. I did have some challenges though with the calibration. So, what I've noticed, um, and this is a beta driver, and they note that on their website, the beta driver even though it is the newest interface and basically the other driver that was offered is not good. And you need to remember that it is stated as beta, so you will have some challenges. And I'm sure once they update the driver that everything will be hunky-dory. Hunky-dory. I haven't used that word in a long time, that phrase. Okay, so hopefully you guys got something from this video. I did it in stages because these types of illustrations, especially ones where you go in and actually paint, I don't do a lot of digital painting on this channel. And the reason why is because it takes so long, it takes so long. So I do it in stages. So hopefully, like I said, you got something. I didn't do a lot of narration over this one. Um, again, because it takes so long. So this is a portrait of Earthworm Jim. One of my favorite video games of all time. That incidentally, I never beat. I never beat Earthworm Jim. It's one of the hardest games I have ever played in my life. I can literally sit here and noodle with this for the next two or three hours. I can do lighting effects. I can change, you know, what I want to do. And there's a strong purple light. So I'm going to go ahead and get my... There we go. I love this green color. Love this green color. Okay. Thank you guys for visiting the channel. Like and subscribe if you like what you're seeing. As always, please hit that notification bell and share the video. I'm trying to grow the channel. Um, more videos to come. More fun. More digital painting. Hopefully more stuff like this. And also, uh, you know, with regards to the device that I'm using, you know, XB Pen makes a great device. And it's it's hard to say what's going to be better in the long run. It, it's obviously, you know, is this a five to seven year device? I hope so. We'll see. You know, this is the, the flagship 2K version um, of the tablet. And so far, so good, except for that driver issue. <laughs> so thank you guys. And we'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you.